An Analysis of Herman Melville's Bartleby the Scrivener, Part 1. Herman Melville lived from 1819 to 1891. He was raised as a Calvinist. This religion taught him that man is inherently evil and can only achieve redemption by God's grace, not through his own works. As Melville aged, though, he became less religious and instead just maintained the idea of, a, of humans as inherently evil. He believed that evil was a major force in the world, but that it was a human force, not an exterior force. This is an idea that he shared with Nathaniel Hawthorne. Well, Melville's mother was somewhat unloving, so he often felt like an unwanted outsider. His father was a failure as a businessman and died when Herman was 13. At age 20, Herman went to sea in the Merchant Marine. He joined up in Liverpool, but not before being struck by the abject poverty there. In a moment of charity, even though he certainly wasn't rich, he tried to help out a hom homeless mother. He later learned, however, that both the mother and her children had died of starvation or illness. This incident formed in him the idea that good couldn't really, really win out in the world, that good acts were doomed from the start, that an individual can't do much in the face of suffering, and that the forces of death are stronger than the forces of life. Obviously, this is a very depressing, pessimistic view of the world. Melville jumped ship in the South Pacific, in the Marquesas, and lived with a native tribe there who happened to practice cannibalism. He enjoyed his life there but mostly, but did not practice cannibalism himself. After a few years, he returned to New York and wrote Typee about his life with the savages. It was a bestseller, getting him a decent middle-class lifestyle. He wrote a few more light adventure novels like this. They did pretty well, but not a lot of money was made. Melville began to write Moby Dick around the time that he became friends with Hawthorne. The story was initially meant just to be a sailing adventure story, but Hawthorne encouraged him to make it an allegory with much deeper symbolism. His friendship with Hawthorne lasted about two years. They both shared a similar worldview. Melville also wanted Hawthorne to help him get a good-paying government job because despite his success as a writer, he still wasn't making much money. Hawthorne couldn't deliver on this, so their contact slowly faded away. Moby Dick and Billy Budd are his greatest and most well-known novels. Both feature this key theme. The world is a place where evil persists. Good doesn't win out and is inevitably doomed in this cruel world. During his middle aged years, Melville worked as a clerk at a customs house, which kept him quite busy and didn't leave him as much time as he would have liked to write. He would have loved to have the kind of job that the narrator in Bartleby the Scribner has, a relatively easy job, but the state of New York abolished these kinds of jobs in 1846.